Hello and thanks for joining us on Green and Gold Gridiron. I'm your host, Brian Groff. As always, alongside PackerReport.com writer, Keith Rorting. Keith, how did you enjoy your bye week? I am interested to find out. <laughs> you know, it's always weird when there's no Packer game, Brian. I got to spend more time with the family. I'm not sure if they like that or not. A little backyard football with my sons and, uh, and my nephew back in Sheboygan. And... Uh, I probably re-aggravated a hernia injury, so I'm, I, I might be on the family IR after the uh, Packer bye week. It was a good day to be outside, oh, but, it was beautiful. but we did get to watch some football. I always want to let you know that Jenny Ritchie will be joining us in just a bit, as well as our special guest. And this week, we have the focus of someone with NFL ties who is from our area, and that's something that we really looked into this year. Dave Craig was our guest yep. in week number one. It's Justin Sins this week, so in addition to getting you those interviews with current and former Packers players, uh, it's also someone else with ties to the area, and Justin Sins, looking forward to that interview as well. So the Packers enjoyed the bye week, and I'm thinking about what you had for your keys, and we did have you do that for a bye week. Yep. One of them was get healthy. The yep. other one was give the ball to James Starks, and then you had a bonus one for I, us. So uh, stay, out, stay out of Vegas. Stay out of Vegas. So if you ask, stayed out of Vegas, Omar you stayed Odom. in Sheboygan. I stayed out of Vegas. I went to <laughs> Sheboygan, which is not quite Vegas. Shevegas. Not quite the same. Yeah, that, that is kind of close. Uh, so part of what you talked about was strategy. Another yeah. part was simply rehabbing and getting healthy because these next two weeks, they have the Broncos and the Panthers, and oh, this yeah. is set up as a couple tough weekends for them. Absolutely. I mean, you need to be full strength. You're getting into the meat of the schedule where everybody's hurt, but it, it was a perfect time for the bye. You know, a lot of times you like it right in the middle of the season. This was a little bit early, but... They need to get Raji back on that defensive line. They need to get Devontae Adams back. I think him most of all, you know, we've seen the last few weeks the offense maybe struggle a little. We've seen Aaron Rodgers look less than super. So I think getting another weapon back is really going to be key, and especially against that Broncos defense that they're going to see. Speaking of the Packers defense, coming back to practice earlier in the week when they all returned, you look at guys on defensive side of the ball, Morgan Burnett, Nick Perry, B.J. Raji, all returned to practice on that Monday, mm -hmm. and they had all missed that game prior to the bye. Absolutely. So you get Raji back in the middle. You know, thankfully he was doing the yoga, the Pilates. That injury might have been a lot worse than it was. Perry had the shoulder. You get him back. The interesting thing with Burnett now is you've had Demarius Randall, the rookie, playing so well. You know, he made that play at the end of the game against Danny Woodhead. What do you do with him now? Because... You're going to have Hayward and Shields on the outside. You've got Burnett coming back. So now Randall goes to a nickelback role. You know, you've got uh, Quentin Rollins, who's, who's getting forced out. Or, or Randall actually in the, is a dime back. Mm -hmm. So he's been playing about two-thirds of the snap. So it'll be interesting to see how they work that in. I think you know, Dom Capers is a guy. He's always... You know, he's keeping that scheme simple like we talked about, but working in working in more players. We like to look about look ahead to what they're going to do next, but really it's also a time for Packers coaches to take a look back. When they self-evaluate, what kind of things pop out for this coaching staff? Well, I'll tell you what, the special teams is, is definitely better. I think Ron Zook has done a nice job. I think McCarthy, we talked a couple different times about him stepping back from the play calling and being in those rooms and, and having more of a say in those individual meetings. Uh, I think we're seeing a defense that gets after the ball, 23 sacks. I mean, that's, I think, the most they've had through six games since 2001. They're second in the league, actually, right behind the Broncos. We'll talk about that. They're getting the pass rush. They're, they could do better against the run. But I also think he sees a quarterback who, despite having limited weapons at his disposal with injuries to Adams, Nelson, of course, out, Andrew Corliss out, some injuries on the offensive line, is still holding it together and making it happen. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, Justin Sins, who will be our special guest, the Edgar native. He's going to join us via Skype from Indiana. So we went Mountain Time Zone last week with Nate Palmer. Yep. We're going Eastern Time Zone this week. We're going to bring in Jenny Ritchie. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about Justin's time at Purdue. Uh, you know, it's a very influential time. We're going to talk about his experience with the Colts, and we're also going to get his opinions on the trend of live streaming these NFL games uh, with the live streaming from, from England going on. So. We're going to dive into a few of those topics with him today. And that's the team everyone wanted to see over the internet was the Jaguars. Uh, well, hey, if you're going to live stream a game. So I, <laughs> exactly, I but, it, but it, it was a, a very successful. It, it, it was an exciting game, as it turned out. So. Yeah. We'll, we'll find out. We'll get Justin's thoughts on that. Much more to come here on Green and Gold Gridiron. Stick around. That interview with Justin coming up after this. Brought to you in part by Hermaning Financial Group. 
Hermitine Financial Group strives to help you and your family reach your financial goals while demonstrating their core values of integrity, independence, and innovation. With offices in Wausau, Stevens Point, Manitowoc, and Wisconsin Rapids, proudly supports Junior Achievement, North Central District. Junior Achievement gives young people the skills they need to own their economic success. Our volunteers help students with financial literacy, work readiness, and entrepreneurship. And it's really helping me understand how it's going to be in the future. Do you like to walk? Do you want to live longer? You will love square dancing. Friends you meet, you meet for life. Marvelous people. I guess I meet people. I love it. Love it. I love square dancing. The fun, the family. Great variety of music. The camaraderie. But you're young. It's fun. Try it, you like it. Oh, Call 715-544-7969. Visit wisconsinsquaredancing.com for more information. First lesson free, singles and couples welcome. When disaster strikes, water, fire, storm damage, and even mold, we take care of them all. Anytime, day or night, 24 hours, 7 days a week. Quality service and customer satisfaction are top priorities. Tell your insurance company you prefer North Star Cleaning and Restoration. And remember, don't just get it clean, get it North Star Clean. NorthstarCleaning.net Welcome back to Green and Gold Gridiron. I'm Brian Groff alongside Keith Rodink, and it's time for us to introduce our special guest. And this is someone that I remember going back uh, quite a few years now. Uh, his high school days at Edgar High School uh, led him to a state championship as a senior, went on to a very successful career as a tight end at Purdue, and then spent training camp this year with the Indianapolis Colts. And I think we have the green for the Green and Gold Gridiron in honor of the Edgar Wildcats. It's our there pleasure to introduce... Oh. Justin Sins. Justin, thanks so much for joining us this hey, week. Justin. I appreciate you guys having me. <laughs> you uh, went down to Indiana. You played your college football at Purdue. You had the training camp with the Colts. But uh, at the end of the training camp, they decided to move a different direction. Tell us what you've been doing since then. Um, I've been back in, in the West Lafayette, Lafayette area. My, my wife, actually, I got married this summer. And um, yeah. my wife was still teaching in Lafayette when I was in Indy, um, cause it's only about 45 minutes away. So when I got released, um, it was kind of like, well, I guess we're <laughs> going to go back there. Cause, uh, cause she obviously had her job there. So I've been back here. Um, I've obviously had a lot of talks with like my agent and everything and, you know, still working out pretty hard. I got a little part-time job at a, at a golf course and I'm going to kind of see, uh, how this, uh, rest of the season goes. Um, you know, if I don't get picked up at all by the end of this season, I think I'm going to kind of move on. I think I'm really interested in uh, maybe the coaching world. So um, we're going to kind of see what I can maybe get my hands on with that. But that's kind of what I've been doing, um, kind of staying ready because things can happen pretty fast. And, you know, you have to be ready if something does happen. Now, Justin, be before we move you into that next career of coaching, talk about this here and, and what's that like? You, you said you're working out, but I mean, you've got your agent. Are you guys, you know, do you, do you watch do you watch the injuries? Are you watching that ticker on the bottom of uh, NFL Network or Sports Center? I mean, you know, when uh, the Packers lose and Andrew Corliss and promote Justin Perillo onto the practice yeah. squad, I mean, is that an opportunity where, you know, you see it or your agent sees it and you, you reach out to a team? Or what's that process like since you're working out to, to really try to get you in front of people and, and get you on the, the radar of those NFL pro personnel guys? Yeah, um, you know, it is. It's, it's obviously, it's kind of the nature of the business. It's unfortunate that, you know, a lot of times at this point you're coming to a team because of an injury or something like that. Um, but that's kind of, it is what it is. And, and like you said, yeah, he, my agent, he's uh, out of Chicago and he'll watch the injury reports every day or, you know, who's getting released, the transactions and everything. And, and he reaches out to teams that he thinks are possible fits. And, and, you know, he's heard some feedback back that's been, um, you know, fairly positive, but obviously I'm still here and not with the team. So it hasn't been maybe as positive as we would have liked, but, um, but, you know, like you said, yeah, you pretty much hit it. Um, he, he reaches out to those teams and, you know, he says he has, you know, a guy that's, you know, ready to go if they want to bring me in and stuff like that. So that's pretty much how it works. Um, it's, you don't really have a lot of control. That's one of the kind of worst things about it. Cause you just got to kind of stay back and be ready and you can't really do too much about it but yeah you pretty much hit it right on the head a yeah. little, little frustrating with 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 kind of having to wait and just you know you're working out you're working hard that opportunity though it may or may not come 
Yeah, it is. Um, you know, you were there for four months and you're living it every day. <laughs> um, you know, with obviously the goal and the end game to make the team or, you know, to make the practice squad and stuff like that. And, and then when it didn't happen, um, it's pretty fast of, all right, uh, so now I don't have a team and, you know, now I'm not going every day to go work out or go to practice and stuff like that. So it certainly is a little frustrating, but, you know, everything will work out the way it's supposed to. And, um, you know, if you keep working hard and you're determined to, to do certain stuff, good things will happen. I think uh, one of the great things about that training camp is that you got to put some of yourself out on film so that people can watch you. Uh, you had a tackle, you had a catch for seven yards. Kind of take us through that process of how you got ready and then eventually signing with the Colts. Yeah, so I decided to stay at Purdue. Um, a lot of guys you know, obviously go to different training facilities, but our strength and conditioning coach at Purdue was actually a former NFL strength and conditioning coach and his job before that was um, he actually trained guys for the combine. So I kind of thought it was foolish to leave his toolage and, and the person that I was comfortable with. And we had a good group of guys. We had six or seven guys that were consistent and working out every day at Purdue. So we really thought that we were getting, you know, the same type of kind of pre-draft training that a person would if they went to, you know, an offsite facility. So that part was really really good. Um, I was running faster and I was bigger and stronger than, you know, I ever was just to try to, you know, get yourself ready for, you know, the next step. And, and, and then kind of fast forwarding to probably two or three weeks before the draft, I had been getting some calls, but then they really started to pick up. And I think by the end of it, I'd heard from like 16 or 17 teams. Um, and, you know, most of them were saying, you know, you're certainly on our board and you know, they're just trying to get to know you a little bit better and, and talk about, um, you know, some of your personal life, some of your football stuff and, and just try to know you a little bit better before the whole process because it happens so fast. But ultimately, um, it kind of came down to probably three or four teams um, before the draft actually happened that I thought were probably the most interested in me. I, those three or four would probably be the, the Colts who ended up obviously ended up going to the Dolphins. Um, Minnesota and then Green Bay came pretty late too but had quite a bit of contact with them late as well um, but anyways obviously the draft happens and like you said uh, rounds five six and seven um, you, know, you kind of heard conflicting things you know some people said free agents some people were saying you know certainly could get drafted late so you're kind of sitting around and I didn't want to just sit in front of the TV all day so I actually had my parents down and and we were just kind of grilling out and hanging out with some friends just to not be sitting in front of the TV for eight hours. But anyways, obviously the draft finished and um, I didn't get drafted. And it wasn't two minutes after the last pick that I started getting calls on my phone. Um, and my first couple opportunities were just to come to like a rookie mini camp, but without like a contract. Um, so, you know, obviously that's an opportunity, but, you know, you're trying to get as you know, you're trying to get signed basically if you can. So it wasn't too much longer after those first couple calls that I got a call from Indianapolis saying that they were wanted to sign me. Um, and at the time, um, you know, that was my first offer to sign. So my agent kind of leading me towards signing with them. And, and obviously I knew they had some good tight ends, but and they're also all in the contract year. So that was kind of a selling point, I guess they gave me, um, so ultimately I ended up going to Indianapolis and, you know, that's kind of how it started. Our guest this week is uh, Edgar native Justin Sins. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have our title town topics with Jenny Ritchie. Stick around. We'll be back after this. Looking for a high impact way for your business to stand out from the rest? Flipside Graphics specializes in vehicle wraps, vinyl graphics, and much more. Cutting edge graphics with professional results is what we stand for. Have a large fleet that needs to be flipped or shirts to be embroidered? Our design team will handle every aspect of the project from start to finish. We design it, we wrap it, we flip it. Call Flipside Graphics today and stand out from the competition. When disaster strikes, water, fire, storm damage, and even mold. 
We take care of them all. Anytime, day or night, 24 hours, 7 days a week. Quality service and customer satisfaction are top priorities. Tell your insurance company you prefer North Star Cleaning and Restoration. And remember, don't just get it clean, get it North Star Clean. NorthstarCleaning.net Thanks so much for joining us on this week's edition of Green and Gold Gridiron. Our special guest this week is Justin Sins, and we welcome in Jenny Ritchie, who has our Title Town Topics. I do, I do. So um, during your time with the Colts, you guys did a Play 60 event with the Boys and Girls Club, which is an awesome, awesome thing to do. So, so what are some of those NFL moments that kind of made you realize, like, I'm living my childhood dream right now. There are so many people out there who want this to be their, their life. Was there any moments like that that just you had to stop for a minute and think about it? So I'm, I'm in the team meeting room and um, kind of waiting to sit down and um, finally they all start coming in and I go sit down where there was an open spot and to my right was Matt Hasselbeck and to my left was Adam Benateri and I'm just kind of sitting there as you know obviously a big fan of you know the NFL and football just in general and the whole history of Hasselbeck being like a Packer and then the Seahawk and then obviously, you know, his successful NFL career and Venetary kicking for the Patriots like in Super Bowls and and then with the Colts. I was just sitting there kind of taking it all in like, man, this is pretty crazy. 23-year-old just sitting next to two NFL veterans who had a lot of history in the game. So that was certainly one of them that I'll probably never forget. And, and they were really cool guys and, you know, they were older than me, obviously, but you know, they, they're our age, I think. Yeah, that's they're what I was old, thinking very as old. well. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they certainly took me kind of under their wing and we talk every day at team meetings and it was pretty fun. So what is some advice that you'd give young players? You know, those kids coming in freshmen at Purdue, freshmen in college, playing football, they want to go to the NFL, that's their end game. Do you have any advice for those kids? Just, you know, trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives. Yeah, I think, um, you know, if, if the NFL is your ultimate goal which you know obviously if you're a division one athlete it's certainly a goal of a lot of you know guys that I played with and and most division one athletes um or football players I should say um you know I think you just have to continue to keep getting better every year um I was certainly someone who came to Purdue a quarterback and defensive back in high school um never had played tight end in my life um never had blocked anyone in my life um but you know, if someone would have told me, you know, my freshman year going through a couple first days of college training camp that, you know, that you're going to someday have a chance to play in the NFL at tight end, I would have told me you're nuts because I was out there getting decked by linebackers and not being able to block anyone. But I think it's just every year you just have to improve and you have to be willing to listen to your coaches. And because ultimately, they're trying to do what's best for you. You know, a lot of times, you know, you'll hear people say, you know, oh, my coach doesn't really like me or he doesn't understand me, but they're trying to make you the best players you can be. And I think I learned that pretty quickly. And that was one of the reasons that I was successful in college and one of the reasons why I ultimately did have a chance to continue to play for a little bit longer. You know, with as a sign of the times, these, these guys might not, you know, know too much about technology. <laughs> We're just the old guys. <laughs> the old guys. Um, so the Jaguars Bills game was live streamed on Yahoo from London. What does that mean? Live streamed. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. I'll explain it. Thank you. I'll use pictures and oh. small words. <laughs> um, so the stream had about 15 million viewers. Um, do you think that this this new technology boost to attract new viewers, not just in the U.S. but worldwide, you know, do you think that's a trend that's going to continue a little bit? That the NFL is going to keep trying to reach those countries that wouldn't normally watch the NFL here? Yeah, I think. Um, obviously, I'm not on it i know my indianapolis they talk a lot about trying to grow the game especially um over some different countries. um you know football has become so popular in america um i guess i don't know the statistics but i would argue that the nfl is probably the most popular sport mm -hmm. um but obviously there's only so many people in america and there's so many other people overseas in europe and, and even in asia where they're trying to grow the game and I think obviously with all the new technology of streaming and everyone having a device right at their lap that that's only going to continue to grow and and hopefully it grows the game because obviously it I think it's you know the best game in the world um, I'm certainly probably a little biased but um but we are I too. think the I think the uh, 
the future of the game does have a stake overseas. And obviously they're playing a lot more games, you know, now in the UK, I believe in England, right? Um, yep. In London. Yeah. yeah. So I think they're going to continue to grow that. And I know the NFL also had talks about, you know, maybe even having a permanent team over there, which I think logistically would be a little bit of an issue, but if it would work, would obviously continue to grow fans overseas and I think would be a benefit to the game as a whole. Yeah, you know, when we were talking about this before mm -hmm. the show, the when they play that game in the morning, that's prime time in Asia. So, mm -hmm. you know, one more way to grow the fan base. And mm -hmm. I was kidding, I actually did watch the game <laughs> live stream. So Awesome. I'm proud well, of you. Speaking of the internet, <laughs> Justin joined us via Skype, so there's the technology right there. And we want to thank you so much for being our guest this week. We had a great time. Hope you did as well. I know you're very interested in the Level 2 football game this weekend. The show airs after the game has been played, uh, but very interested in Edgar and Marathon Level 2. Thanks so much for joining us, Justin. Have a Thanks great day. Justin. I appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. We'll Good be luck. back after this. When disaster strikes, water, fire, storm damage, and even mold. We take care of them all, anytime, day or night, 24 hours, 7 days a week. Quality service and customer satisfaction are top priorities. Tell your insurance company you prefer North Star Cleaning and Restoration. And remember, don't just get it clean, get it North Star Clean. NorthstarCleaning.net Hermony Financial Group strives to help you and your family reach your financial goals while demonstrating their core values of integrity, independence, and innovation. With offices in Wausau, Stevens Point, Manitowoc, and Wisconsin Rapids, proudly supports Junior Achievement, North Central District. Junior Achievement gives young people the skills they need to own their economic success. Our volunteers help students with financial literacy, work readiness, and entrepreneurship. And it's really helping me understand how it's going to be in the future. We're back with our final segment of Green and Gold Gridiron. Packers and Broncos coming off bye weeks. They are both undefeated. The Bengals had a bye week as well, so there's five of them coming into this NFL weekend. Uh, what do you see as your keys going into this game? I think there's a few things. Um, you know, anybody that's watched the Broncos this year, Peyton Manning is very much at the end of a very illustrious career. He's got a few of Brett Favre's records that he's probably going to claim this year. This isn't the same Peyton Manning at all. He can look like old Peyton for a drive here or a drive there. He can't do it the whole game. He can't do it for a series of games. So, you know, he, he's never been that mobile. I think the way the Packers' defense is getting sacks, I think they're going to they're gonna see a Peyton Pinata back there. So, key one, get to Peyton Manning. You've got Peppers. You've got Matthews. You've got J. Ron Elliott. They need to get to him. He's not mobile. They've had problems on the offensive line. So, by all means, get to Peyton Manning and get him down. He's thrown more interceptions than anyone else. It's amazing to see that at this point. He's, he's even said it. He's thrown a lot of wobbly touchdown passes, oh, yeah. but he's throwing up some ducks that are going the other he's way. He's never had the strongest arm, and it's, it's never been more apparent. And how far is Peyton Manning falling? I mean, anybody that plays fantasy football, he's getting dropped out on the waiver wire. So it's, uh, it's pretty crazy when people are letting Peyton Manning go. Any other keys? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing is, you talked about the wobbly passes. He's going to put some up there for grabs. And Green Bay and Denver, they both get their hands on a lot of balls. Uh, Denver, I think, is undefeated in part because Peyton's been able to sit back and watch that defense run those in for touchdowns. So he's going to put some balls out there that Demarius Randall or Micah Hyde or somebody's going to get their hands on. They need to pull those interceptions in. We've seen it through six games the Packers could have a lot more interceptions than they've had if they just hang on to that ball. Let's uh, bring Jenny in, and we'll do our NFL pick-ems. Uh, our standings after last week, 23-5, and 21-7, and 7, and 16-12. and 12. Jenny needs a big week of little, picks. I do. It's, it's been a little rough. Let's start with Jenny. We have the 4-2 and two Vikings at the 2-4 and four Bears. I'm going to do something that I, I honestly never believed I would do. I'm, I'm going to take the Vikings. <laughs> Just so people don't say she takes the Vikings just, every week. Yeah, just so they don't no. say I take them all the time. I never thought I'd have to do that. But, yeah, I'm going to take the Vikings. Keith? I'm going to take the Vikings. Bridgewater's look good. AP's doing his thing. The, the defense is tough. I'm going to go Vikings as well, and it's not just because you two took them. I'm never yeah. going to uh, gain points. Lions, one and six at the Chiefs, two I'm and five. never going to gain points if we keep doing this, guys. I'm going to take the Chiefs. I mean, the Lions, they want it. They do. They we're, just, we're not they discussing just can't. these ahead of time. They just so you can't. got the Chiefs. Keith? I went back and forth on this. I mean, the 
Chiefs have been terrible. I like seeing Eric Berry get his first interception last year, last week, mm -hmm. week, year, whatever. It was only last week. You were running it was a bye week. Can we, uh, again, live stream this game. Um, I'm going to pick the Chiefs. I took the Lions for some reason last week. I felt for you, Jenny, but I took the Lions. So they're the only one that I got wrong. Week. I'm going to go Chiefs. Uh, we have Packers at the Broncos. Remember people a year ago? This guy took the Patriots over the Packers. Who are, uh, we'll go Jenny. Where, where you're picking Packers? this game. She's this going Packers. Packers. Show. Keith, do you, have an, do you have an argument not, for the, not for the home the team no, at Mile High? No. My argument last year to take the Patriots was solid, and I'm glad I was wrong. I do not have a right. solid argument this year, so I'm taking the Packers. And we're in a studio this year, so he can't get <laughs> Nobody. booed by people. You can only boo me from your living room. <laughs> we all took the Packers. Your two locks, Jenny. All right, so I'm taking Carolina over uh, over the Colts. Andrew Luck's just looking really – as much as I like Andrew Luck as a person, I just – he doesn't – he's really off lately, and he's just not really getting they it done. booed him at halftime. Yeah, it's not good when he's booed not good. at half Like, at halftime being booed, that's, that's not – a pleasant it, experience. Keith got booed, but we still love him. But we still love him. And I still love you, Andrew Luck. You're watching bringing this. me back. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to take Carolina. And then um, I'm taking the Falcons over the Buccaneers. You know, their defense is doing well. They're 6-1 and one right now. I think they're going to keep keep going in that direction. Devonta Freeman's tough. You want to you wanna go next? Because I feel like you're stealing mine. I'm not stealing. I'm I feel like you the, picked gonna, the Chiefs only because I picked them. I'll move through quickly. I'm taking the Rams over the 49ers, and I'm going to take the Cardinals over the Browns. I am also taking the Rams over the horrible 49ers. I didn't look at that. I, I'm going to cover this up, and I'm taking the <laughs> Bengals on the road at Pittsburgh. That's a good one. That was the other one that I wrote down that I sure probably would have lies looked into further as well. <laughs> it's, it's, For Jenny, it's Keith, and Brian, our thanks to Justin Sins, and we're calling this episode the Edgar Green and Gold Gridiron. Thanks for watching, everyone.